three, four, five, six times, okay? And it's occurring more than the other data sets here, okay? So we can say that the mode of the data is what? Is five. Good. On the other hand, when we come here, okay, the observations are two, three, four, and seven. Uh, two, three, four, and seven, they are all frequency of one, one, one. Uh, so there is no mode in that data set. Mm? There is no mode for that data set. Then when we come to the last data set, we have, um, I think four is occurring five times. One, two, three, four, five. And then nine is also occurring well, five times. One, two, three, four, five, okay? So we say that the set or the data is by modal. That's the data is by moda it is by moda okay by moda means it has two two modes okay very good that is what it means so you can have by moda you can have trimodal or you can have a scenario where you have unimodal or no modal at all no modal value at all okay now let's move on to the quartiles, which is a more general form of finding the median. When we talk about quartile, okay, quart means four. Uh, quart means four. So when we talk about quartile, then we mean dividing the observations, okay, from the minimum to the maximum into four equal halves, okay? Into four equal halves. So when doing that, you need three quartiles or three partitions. We have Q1, Q2, okay, and then Q3. Very well. So we call this the first quartile. We call this the second quartile, and then this is the third quartile, okay? Yeah, so in the case of the first quartile, uh, the, there is a formula for finding the position of any quartile. The formula is like this. So it is QR, uh, QR is equal to R over four into bracket N plus one, okay? So for first quarter, your R here is one. Uh, R is one. So the formula will be what? For Q1, you will get one over four, into bracket what n plus one and then for q2 you have r is two so it's going to be two over four into bracket what n plus plus one okay good now if you look at it carefully you realize that the formula for the median, okay, was calculated as a result, was obtained as a result of this here, okay? Good, because the median, uh, QM, the formula we used was what? One over two, into bracket what? N plus one. Okay, good. Now you can clearly see that two goes into four, two. So this is one over two into bracket N plus one, okay? So in actual fact, the second quartile here is the median. Uh, the second quartile is the median. Why is it the median? Is the median because this is halfway of the data, okay? This is halfway. There are four intervals here. One, two, one, two, three, four. And the median partitions the data into what? Two equal halves. So the second quartile is also the median. Okay, that you have to know, right? So it means that in calculating any of the quartiles, it's just like calculating 
the median. Uh, uh -huh. So the same process we followed in finding the median is the process we will follow in finding the first quarter, the second quarter, and the third quarter. Just that the formulas will change. For first quarter, it will be one over four. Second quartile is what? One over two. Third quartile is what? Three over four. Okay, that's the only difference there. Okay, so let's attempt a question. It says obtain the quartiles for the, the following data sets. Okay, so we have the data. Then what you have to do first is to arrange the data. Okay, you first need to, to arrange the data set. So in arranging the data set, I think the smallest value here is 10. So we got 10 here. Uh, let me be sure this data, probably it's already been arranged for us. Uh, yeah, it's here. Okay. So it's here. Yeah. So it's already arranged here. This is the data arranged here. Okay. So to get a quarter, like we said, Q1 is what? It's one over four. Okay, the general formula is R over four into bracket what? N plus one. Okay, good. That is for QR. So since R is one here, R becomes one in the formula. And then our N is, uh, let's count, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Okay, so our observations are what? Are 18, so we got 18, okay, plus one. Let me be double sure, so this is four, this is four, this is four, this is four, and then this two, so 18 in all. Okay, so that will be 19 divided by four. Can somebody find that for me? 19 divided by four, which will give us what? 12 point what? 12 point what? 4.72. 7.5, okay. 7.5. Yeah, 12.75. Okay. So this means that we are... Yeah, it's 4.75. It's it's 4. Yeah, 4, 4.75. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, so it's rather 4... Point seven five. Okay. And that was what I mentioned, but I think you didn't hear. Yeah, so yeah, I didn't hear you clearly. Okay, so okay. four point seven five means we are looking at the fourth position. Okay, and then seven point five. Okay, or seventy feet. Okay, uh, portion of the distance between the fourth and the fifth. Okay, you remember the way we calculated for the media. So in general term, it's like this. You're going to look for the fourth position, okay, plus 0 0.75, 0 0.75 of the distance between the fifth and, uh, and the fourth, okay? Or the distance between the fifth and the fourth position. Yeah, this is what we're talking about. Okay. So without understanding, let's do the calculation. Yeah. So we locate the fourth position. When we come here, we have one, two, three, four. So this is the fourth position. The fourth position is what? It's 12, okay, plus 0 0.75, okay, 
of the distance between the fifth and the fourth. The fifth is what, 13? 13 minus the fourth is 12. So we having, this will be 13 minus 12 is one. So times 0 0.5 is 0 0.5. So you get 12 plus 0 0.75, okay? And that is the median value. So that would be 12 point what, 75 is, sorry, that is your first quartile, sorry about that. So that is your Q1. So your Q1 value is what? 12.75. Okay, so that is how you obtain the first quartile of the data. Now let's, second quartile, I think we know how to do it already. Second quartile is the median, okay? So if we were to calculate the second quartile, uh, let's, let's do that. It means we are dealing with Q2, okay? R will be two, so it will still be uh, one over two. I've, I think I've explained that already, N plus one. So that will be what? Observation is 18 plus one, okay? Yeah, then once you calculate that, okay, that will be, uh, when you calculate that, you should get 16, 18 plus this will be 19 over 2, 19 over 2, 19 over 2 should give us what? 9 point what? That will be 9.5, okay? 9.5 means we are looking at a ninth position, okay, plus a halfway or 0 0.5 of the distance between the 10th and the what? The 10th and the 9th, okay, minus the 9th. That's what we are talking about here, okay? Cool. So you go locate the, the ninth position. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven, eight, nine. So the ninth position is 16, okay, plus 0 0.5. The distance between this one will be what? 10 and nine, eh? So this is a 10th, that's 17, okay? So 17 minus what? minus the sixth position, which is the ninth position, which is 16. And once again, this is one. So it will still be the same thing. So it means your median is going to be what? It's going to be, the second quartile is going to be 16.5. Okay, 16.5. Good. I'll leave the, the third quartile for you to try. That will be Q3. Okay, Q3 will be what? 3 over 4. Okay, 3 over 4. Into bracket N plus, plus 1. Okay, good. So when you do the calculation, N is 19, which is 18. So it will be 19, 3 times 19. Okay, over 4. So when you do that calculation, uh, I think you can do that. I'll leave that for you to handle. Okay. So let's move on. Unless there is a question to be asked. If you have any question, you can ask. If you have any question, you can ask. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I think we are we are okay. So um, we're now moving on to grouped data. Okay, I'm not sure we can cover everything. We'll continue when we come back next time. Okay, so for group data, there are some formulas we need to make use of. The first one is the formula for the the mean. The mean 
the formula for the mean in group data is summation f x over summation f okay f is the frequency x is the midpoint uh, x is the midpoint because here we are dealing with what the, the, the classes have been categorized so you need to find the midpoint uh, the, these are frequencies uh, so what this is saying is there are two observations between 34 to 43, but we don't know them. So we use the midpoint. Uh, the midpoint, like we've been calculating all this while, will be 34 plus what, 43 over, over what, over two, okay? So you find a midpoint. That will give you your X for that class. You understand? And that will give you your XI for that class. Okay, so let's try the first example for the group data. Yeah, so we have for um, we have group data, and um, you always be given the class limits and then the frequency. Okay. So like we said, the first thing you need to do is to find a midpoint. So this is the calculation of the midpoint like I explained to you. You find a midpoint that is 38.5. You find a midpoint here and do same across. Then after you're done, you multiply. So it is F times what? X, okay? So this is your F, the frequency, and then this is your X, the midpoint. So this is going to be 38.5 times 2. Okay, so 38.5 times 2 should be equal to what? 77. Okay, the same way, 48.5 times 5 should be equal to 242.5. Then similarly, you do that across all the cells to give us the values you are getting here, right? Good, and when you are done, you need to find the summation of what? Fx. So you find summation Fx. Summation Fx means you're going to add everything here, okay? So that, that is uh, 77 plus two for, just like the cumulative, uh, uh, you add everything, the total, so you add, everything to give us what three three one five then you also find summation what summation f okay good now once you found the totals the formula says that your mean is what is summation what summation fx over over summation over summation F, okay? Good. So you just have to put the values you've calculated, which is 3315 over, over 50, okay? So 3315 over 50 for your mu. Okay, let's move down a bit. Okay, so that is it. So we have 3315 over 50, which gives us 66.3, but you need to approximate the data into the units of your observation, okay? Uh -huh. So we have, uh, 63, we are, we are dealing with books, so you can't have 66 and 66.3, okay? So you run it off to, to 66 books. Okay. Now, 
let's let's proceed. So this is for the the mean. We have some few minutes on our clock. Um, yeah, there is a second example here. It's the same thing. So this is the next example. Once again, you find a midpoint. Okay, you find a midpoint. So this plus that over two, this plus this over two, this plus this over two. Okay, then after that, you multiply by the frequency to give us this. When you are done finding fx, you sum everything to give us your total. And then you find summation word fx over summation f. That will give you your mean. Okay, now let's go on to the next point, the, the median. Okay, for the median, yeah. Yeah, for the median, okay, we're going to use this formula. Right, you're going to use this formula here to estimate the position of, uh, to find the median, okay? You use this to find the median. So you have LB, LB is the lower class boundary of the median class. Then we have C is the class width. N plus one over two is the median position. Then FB is the cumulative frequency before the median class. And then FM is the frequency of the median class. Okay. So which implies that then we will need to obtain the cumulative distribution. Okay. Before we start estimating the median. So let's take an example here. We are asked to find the median for these observations. Okay, good. How do we get that? First, you rewrite, this is a frequency distribution. So we rewrite it, we have the class, we have the frequency. And like I said, there will be need for us to find a cumulative word, frequency. Okay, so once you're done, you have to find the, the position of the median class, which is what? N plus one over two. Okay, N plus one of the, over two will be the 50 observations. Uh, the total frequency is 50. So we have 50 plus one over two is 51 over 2. 51 over 2 will give us 22, uh, 25.5. Okay? So we are talking about a 25th position and a half. Okay? So your cumulative frequency will help us to easily identify the 25th position and a half. So let's go check that out. 25th position. Okay? Uh, this is 2, this is 7, this is 19. So 25th position will be here. Because uh, we've done a cumulative. You understand? Cumulative frequency. Meaning there are two observations. The first two observations are in this class. The next five are here. The next 12 are here. And then the 25th position will be within this class. Because there are 18 observations okay, in that class. And one of them is that 25th position. Okay, so if this is the class that contains the, the median, okay, then we call this class the median class. Okay, so this is the median class. Then you find the class boundary of the median class. That will be 63.5 and then 73.5. Find the class width. That is the difference between the boundaries that will give us 10, okay? So we are basically, we are almost done. Uh, so we have C, we have the lower boundary, LB here, okay, in the formula, this is LB. You have your C, you have your N plus one, 
And then what about the frequency before the median class? This is the cumulative frequency before the median class. It's 19, okay? So FB is 19. And then the, the frequency of the median class itself, that is FM, is what? It's 18, okay? Good. So from our formula, From our formula, if we, we are substituting all these values into the formula, we're going to get we're going to get LB, we know that as 63.5, class weight we calculated that to be 10, N plus one over two, we calculated it to be 25.5. FB is 19, and then FM is what? It's 18, okay? And then when you do the computation, you should get 67.11, which is approximately 67 books. Okay. Yeah, 67 books. Very good. Any question on the estimation of the median? Any question on the estimation of the median? Okay. I think class is, is okay with the estimation. Because there are no questions coming up. Okay. So there are more examples here. You just go through at home and um, you'll be fine. So key things is first you find a cumulative frequency, find a median position, <laughs> identify where the median position is. That will give you the median class. Find the class boundaries, find the class width. And you use uh, the cumulative frequency before and then the frequency of the median class. And that should help you to find the median value, okay? Good. Of course, the last value is the, the mode of the group data, okay? Good, the mode of the group data uh, as well can be obtained using this very simple formula, is the LB times the class width is the same class width then change in the frequency before over change in frequency before and frequency after. <coughs> or oh, the difference, uh, the difference. Okay, so let's go to an example to try and understand this. If we have this table here, okay, what you do is first, you rewrite a table, okay? Then what you do is to find the modal, the, the class with the highest occurring word, frequency, that is this class, because the frequency here is 18, okay? So this is the modal class. If this is the modal class, if this is the modal class, you find the class boundary of the modal class which is 63.5 to 67, 73.5, and use that to cal calculate the class width, which is 10. This gives you LB of the modal class. Okay, this is your C. Then your change before is the difference between the frequency for the modal class and the frequency just before the, that class, okay? So change before is going to be what? 18 minus what? Minus 12, okay? Which is equals to six, mm -hmm. good. And then change after two is the difference between the modal frequency and that just after it, which will be 18 minus 10, which is what? Eight, okay? Good, so you go to the formula, 
and then fuse, I mean, substitute all these values. Once you go there, this is the formula. Okay, you have your LB, which is 63.5. This is a C has been calculated as 10. The chain before we calculated that to be six. Then we have six plus what? Eight. Uh, and then once you do that calculation, you end up getting what? 67.78, which is approximately 68 books. Yeah, so that does it for the estimation of uh, the, the mode for group data as well, okay? If there's any question you want to ask, because this is where we'll wrap up for today's class. So if you have any question you want to ask before we wrap up. Okay. Any question? Okay. So in the, I think Sandra has a question. Yes, sir. Yes, go ahead. Sir, please, about approximating your solutions. Yes. Um, I've realized that it's not all your solutions that you approximate to a whole ticket. Yes. Yes. Please, can you explain it to me? Okay. So when you are approximation, you, you when you are approximating, you take into consideration mm. that the type of data. Okay, so if the data is on the number of books that are sold, okay, number of mm. books that are sold, then when you find your average, uh you cannot leave the average in decimals because yeah. number of books are counting numbers. Okay? But if the okay. data is on height, height is a continuous variable. Yeah. So if the data is was measured in maybe one decimal place, then you also leave your average or your mean or your mode in one decimal place. Okay. Uh -huh. That is the reason behind that. Okay. okay, thank you. You're welcome. So, uh, I asked a number of you to follow me on the uh, on uh, online. Okay, try and read some of my articles because this course is very relevant and you need to know what the course is used for. Okay, I'm just going to share my screen and uh, when you go to uh, research it or even just go into Google. Okay, you got to research mm -hmm. it. Yeah, you find this handsome gentleman like you can see over there. Uh, and then you have a number of uh, documents. Okay, a number of articles you can you can read, which will I mean help you a lot for this course. Okay, so for example, yeah, can you see my screen? Can you see the screen? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. yes, we can. Yes, yeah, so, we can. yeah, once you go there, I mean, you find some very exciting. It will help, it will help you with your research, uh, to expand your understanding of research, okay? Expand your understanding of research in general. So try and, uh, try and follow up on some